Hi, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to sell books online using Kindle Direct Publishing for fame and for profit. And then in a moment, I'm going to explain to you or share with you uh, a tool that we use at Deep Dive Publishers for all of our author success clients. It's helped us and all of our author success clients achieve bestseller status on KDP. So stay tuned and let's dive in. So what does having a published book or best-selling book do for you? Okay. So a lot of people wonder why they should have a book in the first place, or especially for nonfiction, if they're, you know, a coach and a consultant and a trainer, they have online products like a software program or something like that. They often wonder why they should have a best-selling book or a, a book. And the answer is because it gives you credibility, okay? It makes you stand out in the crowd, whatever the market is that you're in, you instantly get expert status, okay? And having expert status, having a published book, even better if it's a best-selling book, really opens a lot of doors. And those doors that it opens it gets you opportunities. It gets you on speaking, like on stages. It gets you interviews that lots of people are clamoring to get. When you have a book, especially like I said, a best-selling book, doors open. When you're considered an expert, when you have credibility, when people see you being interviewed by people that they follow, and that's, you know, they have admire and respect what those people have to say about whatever the topic is, then that can end up getting you clients or students for a program that you have. Or, you know, if you sell software, it can get you new um, subscribers to that software. So whatever it is that you offer, whether it's a product, a service, or something like that, having a book can really, really assist you. Okay. But what about the money? Okay. Because in the title, we talk about fame and profit. Okay. So the first thing that you have to know about money, the sad truth is that the average author makes almost nothing off their books. I mean, that's just the sad truth. Okay. So I looked up this statistic in a 2018 survey by the Authors Guild, the average author, both fiction and nonfiction, earns about $6,080 a year. That's almost as many books as are published per day <laughs> for real. Anyway, so that's the sad truth. So for a lot of authors, especially for nonfiction authors, it's not book sales that get the money. Okay. The money isn't really in the book sales. The money is in coaching. The money is in higher end online programs. The book becomes like a calling card but people buy from people that they know, like, and trust. And so if you have, if they sit with you through an entire book, right, that's several hours worth of reading what you have to say on a particular topic that they're interested in, you are definitely seen as an expert in their eyes. Now, there's a few assumptions around that, you know, assuming it's a great book, assuming that you deliver the promise that you make in the subtitle and all those things. But if you do deliver with a great book, and if these people spend all that time with you reading, then it can get you clients, it can get you people buying into higher end programs, it can get you speaking opportunities and other things just because you have a great book. And that's where the money is, right? That's where the money is for nonfiction authors. For fiction authors, the money is in multiple books. The most successful authors in fiction have a lot of books. You know, they just keep writing. They just keep writing. They just keep writing. We heard recently somewhere, not remembering who we heard this from, but it was someone that we respect their information around publishing and all of that. They were saying that for the average, really successful, like uber successful fiction author, it usually takes about 10 books before one of them really hits, 
You know, that's not always the case. Sometimes the coming right out of the gate, the first book somebody writes is fabulous, but usually it takes some practice, right? The first few books that you write, you're finding your voice. You're learning what it's like to write a whole book. I mean, it's no small task to write an an entire book and especially in fiction, because in fiction, you're not only worried about, okay, what are the 10 steps that I need to teach someone so that they can go from here to wherever I wanted them to, you know, have some proficiency in whatever I'm teaching them how to do. But with fiction, you're doing character development, you're setting up worlds, you're creating an environment, you're helping them feel all these emotions, you're, you know, it is a lot going on. And that takes a little while and a little practice. So the more books you have, the better you get at it, we hope, right? You would think, you would think, in most cases, it's the truth, okay? So by book 10, typically, one of the books will begin to take off. And what happens is when one book takes off, people are reading this book. They really loved this book, unless it's part of a series, right? So they're going to go buy book two. If you don't have other books that are in part of a series, but you have other books written, they're going to go read your other books. They're going to start reading your other books. So not only does the hit become more successful, but all of your books tend to become more successful when one of your books in fiction does really, really well. So that's the key with, with fiction is to keep writing, you know, publish a book, promote the book, do all the things that we teach and other people teach you about promotion. And then, but keep on writing that whole time, keep on writing, keep on writing. And there's a lot of nuances around all of that timing and stuff about when do you publish something, especially if it is a series. And so I'll just throw out that information because it popped in my head to even mention it. And that is what a lot of people suggest is that before you publish book one, say it's a three book series, before you even publish book one, book two is already written and starting to be edited and book three, you know, is beginning to be written like that, that way you can publish this one. And very soon after it, you can publish this one. And hopefully in a timely manner, you can publish the third one. So when someone is finished with the first book and they loved it and they really want to just turn right around and buy the next one, they can, you know, don't be like George R. R. Martin making his readers wait years for the next book in a series, right? They're, you know, rabid fans, they're willing to wait. There's a lot of grumbling about it though, but you know, it's doubtful that if you're watching this video that you're at his level anyway, right? So you don't want your readers to have to wait. So some people even wait till it's all done. They do all three books in a trilogy and then they launch the first one. And like a month later, they launch the second and then the third, just so that their readers can remain satisfied and keep buying and keep buying. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of strategy around that, but, you know, keep those things in mind, especially if you have, if you're a fiction author and you have a series you're trying to do. All right. So next is, you know, we've talked about why you want to sell books. We've talked about fame and fortune and what that can get to you for fiction and nonfiction, right? You can, you can sell more, you can, be seen. Here's what I'll tell you about being a best-selling author. Okay. When there's a speaking opportunity and I'm filling out the form, cause there's a million forms you have to fill out online. If you want to have a speaking gig, if you want to be a presenter on a stage or you want to get an interview, it's just like you're filling out forms and you're filling out forms and you're filling out forms. Okay. But one of the things it asks you is, you know, you got to talk about your credentials. You know, why would your audience want to hear? And mine starts out with, I'm a four-time best-selling author, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Immediately when, when producers or people that have podcasts or, you know, whoever's putting together an event, whenever they see those words, instantly it's a yes for me. Okay. I'm, I'm immediately taken to the front of the line. All right. So those are, they're like little, little feathers that you keep putting in your cap. You know, they're credibility builders. And the more of those that you have, the more success you're going to have because the more doors that get opened. All right. So 
but it also, you don't have to be a best-selling author for that to be true. Having a published book, being an author, you can say, I'm the author of, and you put the title of your book and, you know, then you finish out, that will still open doors for you. It will still open doors. It makes you an expert in whatever the topic matter is of your book. And so that's why we want to have one. That's why we want it to do well. And here are some ways to sell books. Now, before I even get into the list I've created, something I'll say is there are a million ways to sell books. Okay. There are so many books. There, There's like my friend, John Kramer wrote a book called a thousand and one ways to market a book. Okay. There are endless ways that you can do it. If you can think of it, you can use it to sell a book, right? So these are just some of the top ways that consistently assist people in selling more books online. And not all of them are, well, I think I did do only online means. Okay. So, cause there's a lot of ways to do it offline, right? Do book signings and that sort of stuff. I didn't include those, but you can go on social media, have cool graphics and talk about your book and, you know, promote it periodically on different social media platforms. That is a great way to sell books. If it's a new launch, if you're brandy new at this and you're just putting your book out, you know, what a lot of authors do is they give some sort of gift along with the purchase. Now you want that gift to be a digital gift, something that doesn't cost you anything to like ship in the mail, you know, cause that can get very expensive, especially if you're shipping it outside the country. So, you know, but, but with social media, just periodically you put something cool. You can put a snippet, you can put a quote, you can put testimonials or reviews or endorsements that other people have said about your book. Um, and you just, you keep promoting it on social media. It's a great way to do that. Some groups let you promote your book inside there. There's on Facebook. There is a ton of Facebook groups where you're allowed to promote your book. And there's lists of those online. I mentioned John Kremer earlier. I'm pretty sure he has a list like that. So then through your own website, you know, if you have a website presence, you want to be talking about your books. If you have a new book that just came out, you want that on your home page. If you have more than one book, you know, you'll mention them on the home page and then you'll have different pages inside your website talking about each one or your, or if having books is only part of what you do, you'll at least want to have a special page on your website that talks about each different book that you have and what it's about and why someone would want to read it. So a website's a really great way. Book giveaways. A great way to have a lot more people find out about you is to put your book in with a book giveaway where somebody's giving away, you know, five books, 10 books, 15 books around, typically around a specific theme. You know, it could be y'all fantasy. It could be business books or finance. It could be about weight loss and fitness. I mean, you know, it, whatever it's about, but it is a way to every single person that's part of the giveaway is promoting it on social media and through their email list. And so however many people they have as followers and email subscribers, every single person that's giving one of their books as part of the giveaway gets to potentially gather the names of all those people and then promote their book to them. But having your book show up in one of these giveaways lets a lot of people read about it who may never have heard of you or of your book. So those are very successful sometimes. Email campaigns. So part of being an author, one of the first things you want to do is build an email list. We talk about this at length in one of our videos where we talk about how you build your platform. But you want to get names of people and their, and their um, email addresses so that you can periodically send them messages and remind them that you have a new book coming out. Or if they got a free gift when you launched your book, right? So they then got on your mailing list. You can periodically send a message and remind them about your book and remind them, you know, did you see what happened on page 37? 
you know, what did you think about that? Or were you surprised? You know, whatever, to encourage them to actually read it if they just bought it but didn't read it yet. Or you can encourage them to leave a review if they enjoyed it. You can encourage them to tell their friends about it if they really liked it. You know, there's ways to have your readers become sort of promotional team for you. So that's another thing you can do. Blog tours. A blog tour means that you write articles or have interviews by bloggers. Okay, so you find bloggers in your niche or genre or category, however you want to call it. They're all kind of the same thing. Okay, but there's blogs out there for everything. And in most areas, most categories, most genres or niches, there are multiple podcasts and blogs and different things, right? So you want to be involved with a blog tour where you write an article or the person who runs that blog interviews you asking about things. And then that's either put up as a video or it's put out in written text. Um, and often the people that those bloggers, their followers love that stuff. Okay. They really, really love having those interviews and seeing what other authors are doing and learning that through whatever the blog is. It's where they go to find out about new books and things. And the list, like I said, is endless. There are just so many different ways. I mentioned briefly about podcasting. That is a great way to let more people know about you. And every day there's a new podcast popping up and another podcast popping up. It's like, on any genre, on any niche, there are countless podcasts available. And the more podcasts you're on, the easier it is to get on the big ones. You know, the ones with hundreds of thousands of followers or even millions of followers. But you want a little, you know, if you're going to go the way of podcasting, you want to go for smaller podcasts in the beginning so you can get comfortable in front of a camera or, you know, on a radio or anything like that. You get comfortable with someone asking you questions, you know, because a lot of authors tend to be shy and so they may not be comfortable in those situations and that's okay. But like I said, you want to start with smaller ones to begin with. So you get comfortable, you know what to expect, you get better at it, you review what you did and you think about, okay, next time I, I'm going to try this. I think that would go over better, you know, and, and you improve over time as you self-review how each interview went. All right. But we were talking about how to promote online through KDP, right? Or Kindle Direct Publishing. So there, these are the things that matter on Kindle, on Amazon, being promoted through Amazon, whether you're doing it organically using all of these things. Organic just means it's not paid for. Okay. Or doing ads. Even if you're running ads, these things all still need to be fabulous. Okay. So if you're doing through KDP, the most important piece is that you have a fabulous book. It needs to be edited. We talk about all that in other videos that we've done. So it starts out with a great book. You want people who read it to go, wow, thank you so much for writing this. I learned a lot. I definitely would recommend it. And you know, you just, you don't want to slap something together and throw a cover on it and pop it up on Amazon and hope for the best. Like that is a fast way to failure. <laughs> okay. You don't want to be that sort of author. You want to take your time. You want to make sure the story works or that the nonfiction book really does take a person from wherever they are to where you want them to be once they finished reading it and started implementing all the suggestions that you have in a, in a how to book, say. Or you want them to truly understand something in a memoir or whatever it is that you're writing. Okay. So we begin with a great book. Then we've got to have a fabulous cover that matches the genre that it's in or the category that it's been put in. Okay. So the cover needs to be created by a cover designer. Again, I covered this in, a, in another video at length, but you got to have a great cover and it has to grab their attention. But it also needs to look like the kind of books, what those covers look like in the genre that you're part of. Okay. You don't want something that looks like a yaw book, YA meaning young adult fiction. You don't want something that looks like that 
If you're writing a business book or a self-help, it's not the right cover and people won't recognize instantly. Because, you know, what we have to remember is a lot of people are looking on their phone and even on their phone, it's just a little like postage stamp size photo or image that is the cover of the book that catches their attention first that they then click on and go to the get you know the page of the book they see it, the image of the cover bigger and they also see you know everything else so you want a catchy title and I go again into much more detail in other places but you want a short title a longer subtitle this is for fic nonfiction and you want a really great description okay again we've covered it before so i'm not going to go into depth with this but these are the things that sell books these are the things that matter you might want to spend as much time on your description as you spent on a lot of the writing of your book like it's that important and some people review theirs periodically and change it up adding in more keywords adding in um you know, trying different phrasing, trying different things that compel a person to want to buy the book. It's an art and it takes some skill and some people go as far as to hire it out because it really is that important. So reviews, reviews really, really, really matter. People see the cover, then they'll click on the cover. That will take them to the page where they see the title, they see the description, but they also see the quantity and the quality of the reviews. So if you didn't write a great book, guess what? The reviews are going to be horrible. And that right there is going to kill all your sales. That's why creating a great book is so important because reviews really, really matter. And after a certain number of reviews happen for a book, Amazon starts to promote it all over their, you know, all over their site and that's fabulous for you it's free advertising so you want a lot of reviews and you want them to be quality reviews and you want them to be genuine never ever 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 buy reviews because if they find out you will get banned there's all kinds of rules it, it, like don't don't do that okay just don't do that next up we have categories what category is the book in when you upload the book, which I'm going to demo in another video, walking you through the entire process of putting a book up on Amazon. But with the categories, you're allowed two when you upload the book, and then you're allowed to add eight more later. And these categories really matter because if a person really loves, like I do, cozy mysteries, okay, I love cozy mysteries. I know they're silly and goofy and sometimes quirky and I don't know I just really love them I love them in watching them on TV and I like to read them they're not you know it's it's like who did it but it's not super gruesome I think that's probably why I like them anyway so if I'm if I've read all the ones I've heard of and I am looking for something I'm just gonna go to the category on Amazon I'm going to look for more cozy mysteries and I'm going to look for the pictures and see what the titles, you know, see what the cover looks like and what the title looks like. Then I'm going to read the descriptions and look at the reviews. So like I said, all those matter, but it's how a lot of people find new things to read. And then the keywords that you use and keywords are the little phrases that let people know more about a book. So, a keyword could be vampires. A keyword could be um, the setting, like say it's in London. It could be a keyword could be science fiction. A keyword could be um, business book. I mean, the ideas are endless, but the keywords matter because it's also how people search on Amazon. Okay, so if I was looking in the mystery section, but I was specifically interested in cozy mysteries, I can type cozy mysteries into the search and find a whole bunch of cozy mysteries. Only if those books have that, the words cozy mystery in the description and or in the keywords. Okay, so all of that really matters too. All right. So there's a tool that really, really helps people find great keywords and great categories for your specific book. 
And that tool is something that we use at Deep Dive Publishers for all the books that we publish for ourselves and other authors, and also for all of our author success clients. Every single one of our clients has become a best-selling author with, you know, coaching through us and using this tool. And the tool is called Publisher Rocket. And you can, the link is below that you can go, you know, get that tool and it will help you immensely in finding the perfect categories and great keywords for your particular book. They'll help you sell more books for sure. Anyway, I trust that you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and enjoy other videos that we've created. We have a whole pile of them to help you because, you know, back in the video, I said something about the average author only makes this much money, right? 6,000 something, whatever it was. And that was the, I'm calling it average, right? The average author. Well, we're doing these videos to teach you how to not be an average author. We're putting these videos together so that you can be an exceptional author, that you can be a highly successful author, that you can become a best-selling author, that you can do far above average in your book sales and in the back end, if you're uh, a nonfiction author, that you can sell more things on the back end and get more clients, and make more sales of your products or services. So anyway, that's the reason we're doing all of this. So have a great day until next time.